Congratulations, your baby is finally here. The transition from mommy's womb to the outside world is a big step for babies. There are certain challenges your baby will need to overcome in order to sustain life here with us. Simple things like breathing, maintaining body temperature, and feeding can be challenging for your baby at this time. Our neonatal intensive care unit is here to help your baby overcome these challenges and to support you through this process. The NICU environment is a place where your baby will receive individualized special care. In this video, we will introduce you to some of the members of the NICU team and we will show you some of the equipment that you might see when you visit your baby. As you enter the neonatal intensive care unit, better known as NICU, you will be greeted by the secretarial staff who is there to check your ID bands and give you directions on how to proceed. They are required to screen all visitors to ensure that they can visit your baby because infection is a very big concern in the newborn period and only two people are allowed at the bedside at a time. Let's hear what the nurse manager has to say about visitation. The visiting hours in NICU are 24 hours a day except for two times and that's from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. and then again from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. The reason that we're closed during that time is because the nurses are giving report then and we want to ensure the confidentiality and privacy for each baby. We allow two people at the bedside at a time because of space. Um, one of those has to be the parent and we just ask that all visitors check in at the front desk before coming into the unit. Anyone entering the unit must remove all rings except plain wedding bands and scrub their hands for two minutes. Prior to handling the baby or the baby's equipment, an alcohol hand rinse must be applied to further clean our hands. We do not come to work sick, and we ask that you and your loved ones do the same to protect all babies in the NICU from infection. Now you probably want to know who are all these people caring for your baby. First, let's meet one of the doctors who specializes in caring for critically ill newborns, the neonatologist. The neonatologists here at South Miami Hospital are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, it was a good idea when we started um, over 15 years ago to be in-house to try to be here for our patients and also to uh, address all the concerns and questions that the parents might have. In the background, working diligently, you will see the nursing staff who are also an integral part of this team. They are the eyes and ears of the physicians and they look forward to developing a very close relationship with you and your baby. Nurses report to the nurse manager who also oversees all staff members in the unit, including the assistant nurse managers and the clinical nurse specialist. You're probably wondering right about now, what is a clinical nurse specialist? Well, this is a master prepared specialized nurse who works with the clinical staff to keep everyone updated on the latest cutting edge treatments and technologies. It's important for you to feel confident knowing that the nursing staff in the NICU has undergone additional training to specialize in the care of critically ill infants and they are all very competent to care for your infant. Remember, even though the team is greatly involved in your baby's care, ultimately this is your baby and you will be taking him home soon. We really need for you to stay involved in the baby's care and decision making. So seize every opportunity to participate in the daily care like baths and feedings. Kangaroo Care is the skin-to-skin -skin contact between either mommy and baby or daddy and baby. It promotes good uh, milk production with breastfeeding mommies. It also promotes good weight gain with uh, very low birth weight babies. And it also creates a good bond between mommy and daddy. Other members of the team include the social workers who are here to support you during this stressful time for you and your family the respiratory therapist, who is specially trained to manage your baby's oxygen needs. The physical therapist and occupational therapist, who look for any developmental problems that may be developing and initiate early treatment to prevent complications. 
As a physical therapist, my job here in the NICU is to assess babies, uh, the premature babies, for any developmental issues or any congenital issues that may arise if they have. And then we refer them out um, as they get older so that they can receive any therapies um, as they become toddlers and, and uh, adolescents. And let's not forget the nutritionist that advises on the best way to make your baby grow. Let's move right along to the equipment because equipment can sometimes be frightening if we are not familiar with it. The equipment you will see in this video is a sample of the equipment that your baby may need. We have various incubators and radiant warmers to help your baby stay warm. The reason I have the baby under the radiant warmer is because she's not able at this time to maintain her temperature without having some, you know, the heater over her. And anyway, if, if I allow her to get cold, she'll lose a lot, she can lose weight, she'll use a lot more energy. So that's why I'm trying to maintain her temperature this way. Monitors that are used to help us see your baby's heart rate, breathing, blood pressure, and oxygenation. IV pumps that may be used if your baby needs IV fluids. Phototherapy lights, which are oftentimes used if babies develop transient jaundice at birth. Jaundice is caused by the breakdown of red blood cells, which is normal at this time, but if they do not eliminate these products, they can develop a yellowing of the skin that is treated by using special lights. If we delay treatment, a condition called kernicterus can occur. Kernicterus is the brain damage that occurs in babies with exceptionally high levels of bilirubin in the blood. That is why it's important for your baby to stay under the lights as much as possible until the bilirubin level is back to normal. If your baby can breathe well and only needs extra oxygen, a hood or nasal cannula can be used. Many times the baby needs to keep the tiny sacs in his or her lungs slightly distended so he can breathe easier. We use CPAP or a ventilator to give your baby breathing support and oxygen. If the baby needs more help, there are several ventilators that will breathe for him until he can do this on his own. Now that you've had a chance to see the equipment, let's discuss what we mean by maintaining a specialized developmental care environment and why this is so important to your baby's growth. When infants are born prematurely, their nervous systems are immature and are unable to coordinate the systems to interact with the environment. If they are given a rest or timeout period to become reorganized, they can regain balance and stability. This is why the role of the physical therapist and the occupational therapist is key. Research has shown that premature and sick infants cared for in a developmentally oriented environment have improved outcomes. We know that the effects associated with developmental therapy are increased weight gain, decreased crying, more quiet sleep, improved interaction, and greater attentiveness. Here are some of the interventions that you can help us with. Maintaining a quiet, dark environment, containing your baby's limbs during handling, positioning the extremities flexed during rest, placing your baby's hand near her mouth, swaddling him or giving him something to suck on, and stimulating your baby's grasp reflex by placing your finger in her hands. Understanding your baby's body language or signals can also help you support us in delivering the best developmental care. There are times to interact with your baby and there are times not to. Your baby has unique ways of letting you know. Let's review some of those timeout signals, such as color changes, changes in vital signs, gagging hiccups, spitting up, yawning, frantic flailing movements, finger splaying, trunk hyperextension, saluting, diffuse sleep, glassy-eyed appearance, gaze aversion, staring, panicked look, and irritability are all signs that your baby is unable to socially interact. Interaction signals such as a quiet alert state, brightening and widening eyes, 
Regular breathing patterns and focusing of attention on stimuli presented are signals that this is a good time to interact with your baby. There are a few types of diseases that your baby may be diagnosed with while here in the NICU. Let's take this opportunity to review them briefly to make sure you understand their process. Apneas and bradycardias are very common in premature babies, uh, also known as A's and B's uh, to, to a lot of the parents that have been here for quite a while. Uh, it mostly happens in babies that are less than 34 weeks gestation, and a lot of babies either just need stimulation alone or some medications in order for them to overcome the apneas. RDS is respiratory distress syndrome, uh, also known as hyaline membrane disease. It is a very common disease for premature babies and uh, it's due to a deficiency of something called surfactant, which is what coats our alveoli to help us oxygenate and maintain our alveoli open. Second, we have transient tachypnea of the newborn, or TTN. TTN is more common in babies delivered by cesarean section because the baby did not get the birth canal squeeze. Fluid normally is squeezed out of the lungs as the baby goes down the birth canal. This fluid is then replaced by air. Babies delivered by C-section sometimes do not have a strong initial breath and cry and may have leftover fluid that will be removed by the lymphatic system gradually after birth. Sometimes though, the fluid remains in the lungs making air exchange difficult. Your baby may need to be supported with some oxygen while the fluid is eliminated. Third, we have pneumonia. Pneumonia can occur in the newborn period. This is usually treated with antibiotics and supportive oxygen until the fluid in the lungs is eliminated and the baby can exchange air well. A more serious condition is meconium aspiration syndrome, or MAS. When babies are under stress in the uterus, they may pass stool, and when they breathe, they may take in the stool. The first stool is called meconium, and it is very dark and thick. If aspirated into the lungs, it can interfere with breathing requiring a ventilator. Meconium aspiration can lead to a very serious complication called persistent pulmonary hypertension. Let's talk about infections now. Well, we do not want your baby to acquire any bad organisms while in the NICU. But despite all of our efforts, babies are sometimes born septic or get infected. Once an organism has entered the bloodstream, it can quickly multiply and take over, since newborn babies, especially preterm babies, do not have mature immune systems. Once the infection enters the bloodstream, it is called sepsis. When sepsis is suspected, blood will be drawn for a complete blood count and possibly cultures to determine the cause. The treatment is antibiotics and support of the infant until the antibiotics start working. The best way to handle infection is prevention. Proper hand washing and breast milk are a great start. Breast milk helps boost the immune system and is easier to digest. If you have a preterm infant, we strongly encourage you to pump every two to three hours and bring us your breast milk for us to give to your baby for at least the first month, even if you don't wish to breastfeed. Your nurse will tell you more about how to get started on pumping. Feeding itself can pose a threat when it comes to infection. Your baby can show signs of feeding intolerance, such as an enlarged abdomen or vomiting. This is very common in preterm infants. The physician may order to stop the feedings and let the intestines rest. Feeding intolerance can lead to a serious condition known as necrotizing enterocolitis, or NEC. NEC affects the bowel wall and can result in rupture of the bowel. If confirmed by a series of x-rays, the baby would require surgery. For this reason, the physicians tend to be very cautious when advancing feedings. The key to preventing many complications in the NICU is close monitoring by the NICU team and diagnostic tests. Some of the tests that your baby may have done include a head ultrasound. A head ultrasound is routine for preterm babies during the first or second week of life. The ultrasound scanner is placed over the baby's soft spot on the head, which acts as a window to the ventricles of the brain. The images show if there's a presence or absence of bleeding, referred to as an intraventricular hemorrhage. 
the bleeding is assigned a grade from 1 to 4 based upon amount of bleeding, location, and extent of dilation of the ventricles. Another type of test is an echocardiogram, or echo. If your baby has a heart murmur or shows signs of heart disease, this test may be ordered. If your baby has respiratory problems, it may be necessary to take a small amount of your baby's blood to determine his breathing status and perform a test called a blood gas. This test measures the oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other components in the blood. These results determine if your baby needs any breathing assistance and or oxygen. Blood may be taken from an artery in the arm or a capillary vein by pricking the heel. If frequent blood gases are required, especially if your baby is on a ventilator, a catheter may be placed in the wrist or in one of the large umbilical arteries where blood can be simply withdrawn without pain. If your baby has an umbilical artery catheter, it has been threaded into a major blood vessel. You may not be able to hold your baby until this catheter has been removed. As your baby approaches discharge, a few other tests will be ordered. One of them is the hearing test, also called an audiology screening. Electronic sound and response monitoring determines if your baby can hear. Environmental conditions, such as noise in the background, can cause inconclusive results, and a retest may be done in a more controlled environment. After discharge, your child's hearing should be monitored by their doctor at periodic health visits. We also check your baby's eyes for retinopathy of prematurity, or ROP. ROP is a disease affecting the retina of a premature infant's eye where an irregular rapid growth of blood vessels leads to bleeding and scar tissue that pull on the retina. It can be self-resolving or lead to retinal detachment and blindness. The exact cause of ROP is not fully understood. Since there are no signs and symptoms that indicate that ROP is developing, early and regular eye examinations by an ophthalmologist or eye doctor is necessary. Now, let's talk about discharge planning. He can't stay here forever. Before you take your baby home, you will probably need to take an infant CPR class, especially if he is going home on oxygen or an apnea monitor. An apnea monitor is a small monitor that has two cables connected to the baby's chest to detect his heart rate and respiratory rate. When a baby stops breathing because she choked or for any other reason, it is possible to save your baby's life with quick actions and CPR. Ask about CPR training and sign up as soon as you can. After all the challenges your baby will overcome, we want to make sure he or she will have many happy birthdays to come. There are a few tragedies, however, that can stop that wish from coming true. The first is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS. SIDS is the sudden and unexplained death of an infant under one year of age. SIDS is the most likely cause of death in babies from one month to one year of age and usually happens during the first four months of life. Doctors are not sure of the exact reason for SIDS, but there are things that you can do at home to help reduce the chance of this happening. When it is time for your baby to go to sleep, place him on his back in a crib with a firm mattress. Don't place pillows, blankets, toys, or other things in the crib that might smother your baby. Also, do not let people smoke around your baby. Babies that are around smokers have more illnesses and are more likely to have SIDS. It is also important to realize that babies need tummy time during the day for exercise and to develop coordination. The second one is Kernicterus. Kernicterus is the brain damage that occurs in babies from having exceptionally high levels of bilirubin buildup in their blood. If your baby looks yellowish to you or is acting very tired and doesn't want to eat, take your baby to the doctor. The only way to tell if the bilirubin is too high is to check your baby's blood. If she needs phototherapy, it is important to start it right away. The last one is shaken baby syndrome. Shaken baby syndrome is the one tragic cause of death or permanent injury in babies that is 100% preventable. Even shaking a baby who is crying or fussy for just a few seconds can cause broken bones, brain damage, or even death. When a baby cries, he or she is telling you that something is wrong. Take a few minutes to try and find out why your baby is upset 
and never, ever shake the baby. If your baby is premature, you will also be asked to bring in your infant car seat to make sure it is appropriate for your baby. The infant car seat should be new, since many older models may not be up to current safety standards. An older car seat may also have been damaged in some way. When your premature infant is ready to go home, we will offer to perform a car seat test. This test can help you to determine if your baby is able to sit in the car seat and breathe comfortably. You will also need to know your baby's corrected age, which is the number of weeks of gestation at birth plus the time since birth. If your baby was born at 28 weeks and is then discharged nine weeks later, the corrected age is 37 weeks. This is the same age as a full-term newborn, not a two-month-old, even though your baby was born over two months ago. It is important then to see the baby as a newborn and to expect newborn behavior. You will be referred to our Child Development Center for follow-up. Don't worry, after a few months of growing, most premature infants catch up with other children. We hope that our NICU team was able to provide the best for you and your baby during the time you were here. And please don't hesitate to call us with any questions. We'll look forward to seeing you and your baby along with all of our NICU graduates at the NICU reunion in September.